Welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to be trying to fix this GM SI alternator. <sighs> never, never mind the mud and the grass stains. Those will come out. I sure hope so. <laughs> this alternator is the one that came out of our 1975 El Camino. That one. And it's no longer alternating like it should. Uh, the only thing it's alternating between now is charging and not charging, which actually might be what it's supposed to do, but not in the way it's supposed to do it. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of spare alternator parts. I don't know what I ordered that for, but it's definitely for a GM style alternator. So let's see if we can get this thing working. First thing we need to do, uh, from what I can remember, having done this all of maybe once or twice. I am a pro, buddy, a real pro. Is we'll split this case. There we go. All right. And just like when you're taking a carburetor apart, try to set stuff in order off to the side so you know if you did this way to take it apart, it's going to be that way going back together. There we go. So here we've got our rotor because it rotates. You don't say! Uh, which is a lot of wires and a magnet. Look at that. A lot of wires. Uh, makes a magnety thing. This is where uh, you've got two brushes that ride on these two collars right here, they look like they're one piece, but they are separated. I think that's carbon or some sort of fiber in between. Uh, either way, I, this is not the problem, so we're just going to leave this half alone. Now, uh, we need to figure out how to get the rest of this apart here. Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and take this other nut off the back, because I think that's something. Should be a 9 16 Appears to be. It's like somebody's racing chainsaws in the background. I don't know what they're cutting down, but there's multiple people doing it, whatever it is. We can see inside here. The lighting's not great, but there's one, two bolts right there. There's one, two, three there, and there's one right there. And they all look to be quarter inch, probably. Oh, and we got to take these three nuts off right here because those are held onto this thing. That's the stator. It did nothing. Is it a 5 sixteenths? Maybe it is. Huh. It is most definitely not a 5 sixteenths. All right. Uh, I don't know what size it is, but 11 30 seconds seems to work, and that's probably like the only the second or third time ever that I've had to use an 11 30 seconds on something. Weird. One, two, a three. Now I think the stator actually will come out of there. Keep your fingers crossed. Probably shouldn't hammer on alternator parts, but this alternator is also not working, so are we really hurting anything? I think no. Ta-da! Well done. All right, well, seeing as how that is now probably damaged, it should be fine. Now we can get an even better look down in here. This guy right here, one, two, three, black piece and the strap, that's the diode trio. So that allows electricity to only flow in one direction, which should be outbound. And behind that with the fins on it for cooling, that's the rectifier bridge. Wrecked them, damn near killed them. And then you've got a condenser or capacitor, which soaks up all the extra uh, stuff and things. It does stuff. I can't remember, but don't touch that with that and you go, bow. It's lightning-y! Ow. Uh, this is the brushes right here, which ride on this part of the rotor. That's why it looks like something's been rubbing it, because it has. And then behind that, these one, two, three screws hold in our voltage regulator, which is what we're after, really. This other stuff is, eh, you know, probably replace, but not necessary. Yeah, quarter it. I'll pop these out of here. And that should take care of this rectifier bridge. Here we go. Let's just finish off this diode trio. Mm -hmm. There we go, that guy. I'm guessing that this is some sort of fuse or some sort of heat sink or something. Not sure. Don't really know. I have the clue at 
here is our brushes. They're, they're worn in pretty good, but the springs that we had go in here. We're going to put them back in and I'll show you how to hold those in place. Just like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then use like a small screwdriver and push that brush down just until it gets past the hole that's in the end of that. See that hole? Yeah. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take like a finishing nail or something. You're going to block that hole. That's going to hold that one in place. And then you're going to do it to the other side. Push the brush down just the leg of that. And get a screwdriver, small one. Push it down this way. Hard to do with two hands and show it on camera and whatnot and so forth. There we go. Brushes are in place. They're not going anywhere. We're not even saving these, but that's how you hold the brushes in place. Fascinating. That was holding in our voltage regulator, which is bad. Then the only thing left in this case is that uh, condenser, capacitor, whatever. Just be careful with it. Could have shocking results. <laughs> All right. There and there. I wonder if we shouldn't just clean this out. Well, there's only one way I can think of to clean that. Super clean. This is the brand new non-aerosol foaming super clean. Ooh. I guess way more than we actually need to use, but I had to show you that it's foaming and it's not aerosol. Look at that. It's a trigger. Just like that. Did you see that? Did you see that, Jerry? All right. Well, not perfect, but better. We'll take it. So I guess that means time to reassemble. Assemble! Uh, okay. So there you go. If you want to know how to take apart a GMSI alternator to get to things to repair them, there you go. It's pretty easy. If you want to know how to properly diagnose the alternator and uh, know what you're repairing and make sure it works, well, that's not this channel, at least not today. So, this guy's going on the shelf. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.